This morning, we have the wonderful opportunity to bring a new candidate for baptism on this morning, Miss China McLaurin. And you know, as we bring a, a, a new babe in Christ to the Lord, ain't nobody unhappy but the devil. That's right. Can I get an amen? Amen. Because this is a time of celebration. So I want to read from Matthew chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Following that, I will have a prayer. And then finally, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Willie McLaurin to baptize his child. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let me begin reading. It said, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Yeah. And do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And Jesus consented. And John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. Yeah. At that moment, heaven was opened. Yeah. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him and a voice came from heaven saying this is my son whom I love with him I am well pleased see Jesus modeled baptism for us that when we give our heart and life to Christ we know to come to the water to be baptized I believe when China gets dipped in that water the heavens are going to open. The floodgates, the dove will come out. And say, this is my child, whom I am well pleased. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time, and this moment of celebration as we bring to you your child, who you created, who has given her life to you, to follow you, to be baptized. So God, we thank you for this time as we celebrate her life and her journey that she'll be taking in following you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dr. Malone, I turn it over to you. day that the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and uh, be glad in it. And what a privilege it is for us to gather together uh, to observe one of the ordinances of the church. Uh, one of the ordinances is the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, and the other ordinance is the ordinance of baptism by uh, submersion. And baptism is the outward expression of the inward change that's already taken place in the life of a believer. And today, 
Uh, what a joy it is for me and us and the body of Christ to celebrate with my daughter and now my sister in Christ, Sachana McLaurin. It's, it's been said that the two most important days of your life is the day that you were born and the day that you found out why. And so now Sachana understands why uh, God has created her. He has created her to bring glory to his name and to lift high the name and the fame of the Lord um, Jesus Christ. And so today, Sachana, just want to ask you a few questions today. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin? Yes, sir. Do you believe uh, that he was buried in the grave? Yes, sir. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day morning? Yes, sir. Well, amen. Well, upon your profession of faith and your obedience to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. When you go down in the water, you'll be buried with Christ. And when you come out of the water, you'll be resurrected in brand new life. today that we can celebrate birth and uh, new birth in uh, Christ Jesus. We are certainly glad that you are here with us today. We just come with no other agenda than to give our Lord and Savior the praise that is due him. What do we have that we got to give? We get to give him that the spirit can dwell in us this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can somebody just shout hallelujah, Jesus? Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah, Jesus. We've added another name to the kingdom. Amen. Can we just celebrate him this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. There's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Place it. 
and let him dwell. Let him use you. Let him feast on you. Let him guide you. Holy Spirit, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we come to you today to worship you, to open up our hearts to you. We surrender to you today, Lord, for you are worthy to be worshipped. You're worthy to be praised. And we bow down to you today, Lord, for you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord, and allow your spirit to, to search our hearts, to search our minds. Oh, God, we give you praise today. As we come to you in prayer, I want to have a special prayer for Sister Mother Clemmy Huggins. She's taken to the hospital on today, on this morning, for pneumonia. God, we're lifting her up to you right now, Lord that you are healing her body right now in the name of Jesus. Allow your healing to touch her right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Be with her. Oh, God, we come to you today praying for all of those who stand in need of prayer. For we all stand in need of prayer. Whatever it may be, Lord, maybe a spiritual guidance. Maybe it's a lost soul. Yes, but we all need you, Lord. Right now. In the name of Jesus, we yes. need you by your holy power. Yes. We call on your name to right touch now. hearts in, in this place. Yes. We ask you to touch those that are streaming touch, touch, touch. with us right now. Touch. Those who are glued to the TV or, or to their telephone. God, we, we're asking that you touch them right now. For that we all stand. In need of prayer. We're all going through something in our lives. Oh God, you are our protector. You oversee us. You build walls around us. And so we thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you gave your son to die on the cross, Calvary's cross. For each one of us, Lord. God, we come to you for those reasons. And that Jesus has given his best for each one of us. That we may worship in spirit and in truth. So God, we thank you today. We give you praise, we honor you. And Lord, when we give you praise through song, we just want to lift our hands. Sometimes we just want to do a dance because you love us that much. And we just want to give back to you. So, Lord, let us give back to you today, Lord, through our praise, through our worship, through our surrender to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are able, that you are mighty, that you are worthy, that you are a protector that you delivered us, that you cared for us, that you raised us up, that you woke us up this morning, and we just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. When words can't express, we know the power of your spirit within us speaks for us, Lord. So, God, we just want to continue and worship today giving our best to you, giving our all to you. We're going to pray, God, for the speaker of the hour. Reverend Willis Tusi. Touch his heart right now. Free his mind, free his spirit to speak your word. That it will edify, that it will lift us up, that it will encourage us. That as we leave this place today, we are encouraged by your word, that our faith is that much stronger. Our hope in you is that much wiser, and we say thank you. So touch him now. We touch him now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen and amen. Welcome everyone to Simeon Baptist Church. Where all we want to do is worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I look at it this way. We don't want to play around. We don't have that much time to play around. Because we don't know our days. So when we come into this place, we want to worship in spirit and in truth. We want to give our all to the Lord. So welcome to Simeon Baptist Church. Those who are streaming with us, we pray that we uh, give a word of uplifting to you. Whatever you may be going through, that you are encouraged by the word of God. Once again, welcome. However you are streaming with YouTube, Facebook, whatever it may be. And if you're with us for the first time, please go to our website, simeonchurch.com. Learn a little bit more about us. You can join our Bible studies there. You can be encouraged through the Word, through Zoom, through face-to-face -face interaction. We would love for you to join just through Zoom. You can go there, register, become part of one of our Bible study classes on every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. So we encourage you to do that. If you're with us for the first time, understand, let it not be the last time. Come back and see us again. You may join us. You can go to our website there and give us a prayer request. Give us an encouraging word, whatever you may do. We want you to do that. I want to remind those who are here that the virus is still around. Delta is still grabbing hold of people, especially those who have not been vaccinated. So I just want to encourage you to be vaccinated, to wear your mask, whatever you need to do. Anytime you're feeling sick, we want you to stay home. We yeah. want to make sure that you worship God in the comfort of your home. Because yeah. we want you to get well. Yeah. God cares for you and loves you. Yeah. So just be encouraged by that. So let us continue to protect each other through the wearing of masks. As I think I put in an email, everybody looks beautiful in their masks. There's going to come a day when we'll be able to take those masks off and we'll be able to do what we used to do. But for right now, you look beautiful in your mask. Congratulations to China. Congratulations to you. I know that Brother Willie and Antonio and Sierra, the whole family, this is a special moment for the family and special to you. Thank you for giving your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, becoming part of his family. We want to welcome you on your journey, whatever it may be, that you stay close to the Lord, that you continue to be in his word as he leads and guides you through life. And girl, you got a foundation at home, a strong foundation that will always be there for you to encourage you. So congratulations, Miss Sierra. I want to make mention that our mission team is taking donations for the Second Harvest Food Bank. And we want you to give your canned goods, dried goods, and all of those things. Bring those to the church. They're going to be doing this till November the 1st. So there are a lot of needy people out there. We are blessed to have each and every day to have food on our table, to have shelter, all of those things. But there are many who struggle each and every day just to have food on the table, just to have breakfast or lunch. So do your best to put it on your mind, put it on your calendar to bring as many canned foods and dried foods, cereals, whatever it may be, that we can just fill the place up so that we can help support those in need through the Second Harvest Food Bank. Sister Carolyn Wells wanted me to remind the ladies, the women, that the women's discipleship is still going on. The class is still going on on Tuesday via Zoom at 7 p.m. So ladies, if you haven't gotten involved, get involved. As I always say, we have so much going on here at Simeon, especially our Zoom classes, Bible studies, our prayer time. If you're not part of something, grab a hold of something, become part of it. As I always say, like Mike, you try it, you might like it. You just might like it. So I want to encourage you to do that. Remember to bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse. You can give as you come in. And just in case you forgot, 
you can give as you go out. But we want to make sure that you give your best, give with a joyful spirit and a joyful heart. Every time you give, think about what God has done for you. Think, think about what you have. Think about where you live. Think about how you do have food on the table. And all God says, I'm taking care of you. I'm blessing you. So all he wants you to do is just give a portion back to show your appreciation for what he has done for you. So please remember to give. You can give online at simeonchurch.com. Go to online giving. You can text your givings in. Just dial in to 900, excuse me, 615-900-2141. Or you may mail it in to Simeon Baptist Church at P.O. Box 432, Laverne, Tennessee, 37086. Well, I want to thank you for this time, a few minutes of announcements, but we're going to get back into the praise and worship. We just want to glorify God through song. Allow the words to penetrate. Allow, allow the words to help you surrender to the Lord. Allow the praise and worship to be part of your worship, where you're giving to God through song. So it's okay to get up and raise your hand. And it's really okay to run around the church. It's okay to because God is working on you. Never mind your neighbor. Don't think about your neighbor. Think about how you want to worship God and how you are free to worship God. Because there's so many nations and countries that don't have the opportunity and cannot worship God. And we have the opportunity to be free in all that we do. So as the praise and worship team comes, I want to see you enjoy the worship of worshiping God through song. Amen? Amen. Following that, we're going to get into the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. We came to tell you something this morning. That we serve a God who can make a way out of no way. Yeah. It's just a real simple school song that, you know, takes us, takes us back. And some of us uh, 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 lived back in the day, as my kids say. But some of us uh, know this message. It said the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Somehow, he will make a way. And then he says, oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, it will. And, and if you're doubting him today, you just tell yourself, oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. Uh-huh. I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, it will. Yes. 
When the enemy's coming at you. Sometimes when he's coming uh, over here and, and he's coming over there, he's telling you what you can't do. He's telling you what you're not able to do. He's telling you how you're defeated and how you can't make a way out of no way and how you can't find your way up even from a bag. You can't on, find your way up. You can't oh. find your way through. Yeah. And all you got to tell him is, Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Because I know the Lord. He'll make a way for you, for me. He'll see you through when your burdens come. And you say to the Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Because I know the Lord. He'll make a way. You know, we started this morning about the, about the, the, the truth of the Lord. And the truth is that I know the Lord will make a way. And then if you're not convinced, he said, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. I know the Lord.
Thank you, thank you. Amen. I'm so glad somebody came to worship the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. We want to thank the Lord today for his grace and his mercy. And I and I reflect back yeah. when we had the baptism of Sachana. I don't know yeah. if y'all understand the magnitude of what happened this morning. I don't know if somebody caught the magnitude of a child giving their life to Christ. Oh, we're going to elaborate on that a little bit later. But to see the picture of a child go down and being baptized by her father and embraced in a hug, not only to say, welcome my child, but welcome my sister. Oh my God, I don't know if y'all understand what just happened. So that may have went over some of y'all's head. Given the perfect picture of what it's like when we come to Christ, that God has his arms wide open, saying, welcome my child. Not only that, but welcome my sister. Amen. Somebody following me right now. Amen. We have come into this house to praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here today. I want to thank our, our Pastor Rollins for providing me this opportunity. And I must take it, uh, the, the opportunity to apologize to him. I know it's not needed, but this was supposed to happen probably about a month ago. But I called him and said, Pastor, I can't make it today. We got some things going on here that I need to work through. Uh, work through me, <laughs> for those of you know. But anyway, we're going to thank God for this opportunity, and we continue to pray for our pastor and Lady Rollins yeah. and all that they do to lead this flock. Oh, Amen? Yes, it is a great day in the Lord, yeah. and we want to go to the Lord in prayer and get into the Word. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to do this as ex expeditiously as possible because uh, I'm going to pray that the Lord make this thing happen today because uh, I can't do it on my own. So y'all pray for me. My spirit has been in a place, and I don't know where it's been, but I'm knowing that, that God has not left his children, so I'm just going to have to see what the Lord is going to do with this, this thing in the morning. So we're going to find out together, amen? amen? Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come to you today thanking you for this opportunity to stand before your people. Dear Father, and I pray right now that, that, that you take hold of this place, take hold of my words, take hold of my soul, take hold of my spirit. 
Dear Father, and let those who are listening in, those who are sitting here and those who are listening in, prepare their hearts to hear a word of God. Dear Father, let them remove all the distractions so that you can put their soul in a place where it can receive, so that you can put their hearts in a place to hear. Dear Father, so that you can put their souls in a place to receive what you have to offer to us today. Dear Father, we pray that you may move me to the back, that you may be in the forefront of all that happens this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. I want to turn our attention to the book of Revelation. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be coming from chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. Yeah. And uh, as, I, as I go into this, I want to uh, take this opportunity before we get started yeah. and reflect on, uh, you know, the relationship of, of my marriage, my wife, Trish, Thank God for her and, and, and all that she does for the household and for the children, for me, and for all those who reach out for her to uh, have some guidance. So I thank God for a spiritual woman. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we, we pray uh, over, over you and pray over you and your households Amen. that God continues to intervene daily. So as we get into the word, I'm going to come from Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. And all those who can stand as we read through the word, I'll be brief. On the word. Revelations 2, 2 through 4. It says this I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. Yeah. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. Right. And I have and have found them to be liars. Yeah. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake. Jesus. And I haven't uh, and haven't become weary. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Amen. Y'all may have a seat. May have a seat. Now, the title of my message is simply, don't leave your first love. Amen. Now, 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 now let me catch some of y'all before, before y'all start to drift off too far. I'm not talking about any person on this side of heaven. So just, just get that out of your mind. It's not that kind of thing. This is, this is talking about the one who loved you before anybody on this side ever thought about you. This is the one who is the lover and the keeper of your soul. The one who first loved us. As 1 John 4, 4 and 19 says, it says that we love because he first loved us. The one who knew us before we were known by anyone else. The one who had our best interests in mind before you came to the mind of anybody on this side, even your parents. Psalm 139 says, for you, cre you were created in the inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The one who loves your soul. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I knew the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Amen. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, I pray that was enough to get us focused back on the first love, the first lover of our souls. Amen. So that you can take a walk with me in a word for a little bit. Now, in this particular scripture, Jesus was commending the church of Ephesus uh, for their diligence uh, in, in, in their serving, in their work, in the work they were doing, calling out evil, doing the thing you expect a good, good Christian folks to do, yeah. calling out those who claim to be prophets and were not. For their perseverance and their patience by doing so and not becoming weary in the work. So the problem that Jesus pointed out is that they had become a loveless church. So what do you mean they were doing the work? But he said, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And he went on to say in verse 5 and 6, it says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first work. What is the first word? Glad you asked. He says, unless you repent, but this you, this you have, that you hate the deeds of Nic the Nicolaitans, which I hate also. So he's saying you're doing the work. You're putting in a good work. Right, you're doing some good stuff, but you're doing it apart from my love. Right. You have gotten so good at doing the work, you forgot why you're doing the work. Amen? Oh, Lord. Hang on, Tusa. Hang on. It says... They were working for Christ 
and moving away from the relationship, the passion and the reverence that they had when they first were brought to the knowledge of Christ and being justified in faith. They were being warned of the consequences. He said, if you do not repent and reminded them, they did, in spite of themselves, they had some good things working in their favor. They had, in fact, were doing the work, but it had become routine. They were losing their reverence for the work. Jesus is calling them to restore that relationship. Now, in the, in the book of Revelation, it goes on and talks about these seven churches. And he points out even the two through th the chapter 2 through 3 that there were five churches that he called to repent. Right. That was the church of Ephesus, Paragon, right. Thyrant, Thyrantira, and the dead church of, Sardon, of Sardis, and the lukewarm church of Laodicea. <laughs> so he went through all those and said, you five need to repent. But he went to the other two, yeah. the persecuted church of Smyrna and the faithful church of Philadelphia to encourage them. So, but we're going to focus on this idea of the loveless church. Yeah. So, in this, not only can serve as a warning to the church, because us individually, because we are what? The church. Yeah. So, today, we're, we're going to stay on this first love. So, this gets me to my first point. All right. Some would rather work for Jesus than to be in a relationship with Jesus. Right, on, because that's convenient on the spirit. Because one thing I know about a working environment is that you don't have to love the people you work with. You don't even have to much like the people you work with. And if you've been in some churches, you've seen this in the church. Some hardworking people for Christ. But just as nasty as they want to be. Technically, they're right. Spiritually, they're wrong. Amen? Oh, we're going to dig into that a little bit more. Say, now, now in the church... Whereas individuals, this is work that is working for Jesus. Jesus, uh, 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 and, and they told them that they abandoned the relationship. Yeah. And they came to a place where they were serving in a self-motivated way. Right. Serving as they, serving as self-created interests. Yeah. So they did a good work. They did a good work by calling out things. They did a good work by, by staying diligent. But he said, I have one this thing against you, yeah. that you have left your first love. Yeah. They do and say, so one of the things you can, you can see it today, where people do and say some questionable and crazy things right. uh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> said, Lord have mercy. It confuses believers and non-believers. <laughs> non-believers looking at believers like, what? And we looking like them like, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. So then one of the things they do is they take a more judgmental and self-serving approach than a restorative approach. Mm. Some believers going, well, I like to say believers because Christians, we put a label on people as Christians. Because Christians, depending on who you're talking to, can mean a whole laundry list of things. But a believer is simply is believing in the word of Christ. So I'm going to use believers as my go-to. So. When you talk about this idea of being judgmental, so if you think about the story of the blind man in John 9, 1 through 3. So they saw this blind man, and the disciples' first question was what? Who sinned? This man or his mom and daddy? Yeah. And Jesus said, neither. This was allowed to happen so the works of God could be revealed in him. Right. But their first thought was, something wrong with him, he must have did something wrong. And so when we in believers in Christ see somebody struggling, we always go to, well, they must deserve it. We don't know what God is up to. Right. Hold your judgments to yourself and serve as God would have you. And even the parable of the good Samaritan in Luke 10, 25 to 37. Notable church folks, church folks walked right by this man who was half beaten. He was robbed. And they say the church folk went around. <laughs> But it said, a good Samaritan. Now, the thing about the Samaritan that I noted, he didn't necessarily say he had a religious affiliation. Now, you can probably assume some things that being from Samaria and all that was going on at that time, but he didn't say there was any particularly spiritual affiliation. But he said the one person that acted as a neighbor was a Samaritan. And so, look, watch this. All people who are non-believers are not necessarily bad people. All people who say they are Christians are not necessarily good people. Amen? All right, let's get that. Okay, all right. You follow me now. You follow me. So they can easily focus on 
technically being right and ignoring the spiritual wrong because the things of the spirit is not a priority. Now, if you ask that church person, where were you going? Well, I was going to church. I had a Bible study to go to. I had a, had a sermon to preach. You mean to tell me you walked over somebody in the name of Jesus to do the work of Jesus? You, you're working for Jesus, not with Jesus in that instance. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Say, I believe the point Jesus was also making here is that if you are not acting out of love, you are not doing it on my behalf. And if you're not doing it on the behalf of Christ, whose behalf are you doing it on? Self-serving. Lord have mercy. It's more, and Christians have more of this attitude of, I have checked the boxes, and I'm doing you a favor, Lord, by showing up. What's the problem? Here's a couple examples. Mary and Martha, Luke 10, 38, 41. Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened up her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he said. But Martha, poor Martha, Martha was distracted in all the preparations she had to make. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you care my sister left me doing all the work? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it would not be taken away from her. Now, should you get your house in order and prepare? Yeah, you should. But if Jesus is sitting in your living room, you can leave them dishes dirty. (laughs) If Jesus is sitting in your living room, you can clean the bathroom later. In fact, you should have had it clean before you got there. But the idea is, if Jesus is in your presence... Everything else matters none. So when you are in the house of the Lord, all that stuff we got going on outside of here matters none. Because you have chosen the good thing. And Jesus said, I'm not going to take that away from you. Well, Tuesday, you didn't come to my thing that I had put on the schedule for two months and you said you was going to be there. I know. I said, I look and see what I had going on. (laughs) I had to check with my wife. My wife got something going on. That's second. But first of all, Christ got something going on. You, you, you in third place before you even get started. <laughs> so choose the thing that is good. Yeah. Now, Martha was working for the Lord. Mary was seeking a relationship yes, with the Lord. Yes, Martha, technically right. Spiritually wrong. Amen? And we go to Matthew 19. This young ruler, yeah. he said this. Now, behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what, thing, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life so that, uh, so he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good other than, uh, no other one but God. But if you want to enter the kingdom, uh, keep the commandments, he said, well, which ones? (laughs) Lord have mercy. I found out with some folks, they ask specifics, so they only do specifics. So if I told my kids, go clean the garage, that's a whole different story than saying, hey, can you go pick up the stuff in the garage? What you want me to pick up? Everything. <laughs> well, what? Everything on the floor. Everything. Well, just, just clean the garage. Yeah. Well, what you want me to do? I want you to clean the garage. Well, what does that mean? Clean the garage. <laughs> so you got to be specific when you talk to folks. So this is one of this, this character who was going to be specific. He said, well, which one am I supposed to do? And he said, uh, you should not murder, you should not commit adultery, you should not steal, you should not bear false witness, honor thy mother and father, you should love your neighbor as thyself. The young man said to him, all these things I did from my youth. I'm good. What else do I like? What else you got, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. Come follow me. But the young man heard this saying and went away sorrowful. <laughs> Well, he had a lot of stuff yes, <laughs> translated. Right. So sometimes, uh, something that caught my eye in this, this particular scripture that I never really grasped until I started studying this is that Jesus mentioned all the commandments that address our horizontal relationship. But he never specifically mentioned the vertical relationship, the things with God. Right. So he said, I'll treat everybody right. I've been doing some good stuff. 
Jesus said, but your relationship ain't with the one that matters. And he got upset and walked off. <laughs> Which is, no other God before me. Don't make images of anything and worship it. Don't misuse and take my name in vain. Keep the Sabbath holy. He never mentioned those specifically. Which I thought was amazing. That he said, this stuff down here, I got covered. And a lot of people feel that way. I do some good stuff. I'm not a bad person. True. Not every non-believer is a bad person. Being good and bad is not the issue. (laughs) The issue is with your relationship with Christ. So, and I don't know if the boy got excited and cut Jesus off before he got to it, but technically right, but spiritually wrong. He's like, I did all this stuff. Praise God. (laughs) No, no, you ain't praising God. (laughs) But I'm sure of one thing that Jesus knew where his heart was. He wasn't fully committed to the relationship where the Lord was the focal point. And that's where we miss out. So my second point is, men and women will applaud you on earth. But it's not noted in heaven if it's not connected to heaven. And that starts with where your heart and your relationship is. We can do a lot of great things on our days here on earth. Uh, We can get all kinds of recognition and praise from men and women. But Jesus said, never leave your first love in doing so. The one who loved us first. Don't leave Christ to do it. Works won't get you to heaven. But if you accept faith in Christ, you will do the work with the relationship in mind. Because scripture tells us faith without works is dead. And now your works take on a whole different relationship or a whole different meaning because you're not doing it for self-motivation. You're doing it to glorify God, which means you take a different approach to it. So here, here's the scary thing. This is going to scare some of y'all. There are going to be some hard-working Christian folks that might not make it to heaven. Hard-working. Lord, I visited the poor. I, I fed these poor people. Even that man that, that keeps stopping me every time I go to work, I gave him a bottle of water one time. I mean, God, I, I've been working hard. Depart from me. I never knew you. Hmm. Who somebody going to be surprised. <laughs> work without... Faith is just work. This is not a salvation unto works. Your relationship connects to your faith that connects to heaven. Remember, you, you, to work for God, you're not required to love anybody or even like anybody. You can go to work every day for a paycheck and do a great job and not love anybody you work with, much alone like them, because you are not working for Christ. So when we look at the church, we talk about the committee members, the choir members, the ushers, the Sunday school teachers, the deacons, the trustees, ministers, and everybody alike. Lord have mercy. Going through the motions. <laughs> and here's the thing, they've gotten really good at it. <laughs> As you can't tell, you're like, oh man, they they ooh, they bringing it today. <laughs> Boy, they, they, the, the spirit is moving. No, the spirit ain't moving. They just exercising the talent that they have perfected. <laughs> Amen? And you can work at this and get good at it. <laughs> and you wonder, how are these church folks always getting in trouble? Because they didn't got good at their craft. <laughs> because at that point, the Holy Spirit is not required to even engage once they kind of hone the craft. And it's hard to tell from the naked eye. Until you start seeing where their relationships are. Amen. Right, if they're doing a good work relation, good work in here and all their relationships outside of here is jacked up, you're like, huh. Yes, oh, what's going on there? Church every Sunday just singing and praising and preaching. <laughs> Judgment. Must be everybody else. He look all right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Woo. But here's the deal. People work to polish their talent, but not their spiritual giftedness. So when we operate, if we're not operating our spiritual giftedness, we're we're operating in self-mode. We're saying, oh God, I got this. I done learned a new step to get with my song I'm singing. I done learned a new hoot, and yeah, I done got it all together. I'm polishing this thing up. So here's the deal. Watch the authority and the power of the word of God. 
he can still work through you in self mode to save somebody else. Even though it ain't doing you no good. So you can say, Lord, I, I preached today. There was a whole bunch of people came to Christ. Woo, I'm doing a good work. Oh, are you really? <laughs> you mean Christ ain't had nothing to do with that? God said, I can use it. But that don't mean it's going to do you any good. That's the authority of God and the power of his word. You don't have to be exactly right for, to, to, to tell a good word to somebody and for it to even be received or to even save somebody. That can all be done and your relationship be jacked up. I'll tell you what, I don't want to send nobody on vacation and I'm not go with them. <laughs> I want to get there with them. Amen? Amen. So outside of being willing to work hard, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple person. I don't have any special talents as an individual. Now, working hard <laughs> or, or, or all these things in your talents will get you a long way, but it won't get you to heaven. You can work hard and make a lot of things happen on this side of heaven. Yeah. But heavenly connection won't do any good. Wow. And here's the one thing you need to think about. It, it should never get you a long way or get you further away from God. That's right. Your talents and your works that you were doing. Yeah. If it's moving you away from God, you are, have to think. Yeah. Whew, I done rolled out here and I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I went over a friend's house and, and, and I rode a, 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 a wave runner for the first time. I got excited, got out of the water, and I went punch, zoom. I went all the way out there going, boy, I got it now. And didn't realize how far and how fast I had went. Turned around, I'm in the middle of the lake, lost, y'all. <laughs> Took me 30 minutes to find out how to get back because I done went out there on my own and saying, ooh, I got this. Panic. I'm asking people, hey, you know where this certain place is? <laughs> I played it off. <laughs> hey, do you know where um, this certain famous, famous folks' house is? I'm just touring the area. I just want to know where the spots are. Because I knew where I was going was close to this certain spot. So I played it off. And I was, got back, I was like, man, you'd be surprised how many people don't know where these houses are. <laughs> but the idea is we can't get in our self mode and just take off. You get lost. <laughs> Prime example. So here's one of the things you need to learn how to do. You need to learn how to operate in the spirit outside of Sunday. You have to learn how to operate and build that relationship the minute you walk out this door. Because this is the easy place to do it. You can come in here and look holy and dress nice, smell nice, and walk out of this, house, out of this God's house and just leave the relationship at the house. So, I don't know about you, but I desire to work in the gift that God, God has given me Amen. through the Spirit, which means I don't want to get accustomed to working in my own strength. Right. I don't want to get accustomed to that because <laughs> if you catch me working in my own strength, depending on what day you catch me on, ain't no telling how I might react to how you being silly toward me. Because <laughs> right. the last thing I need is like, Reverend Tuesday? Unsaved folks looking like, saved folks looking like, he go to church with you. I don't know what to tell you. That ain't what we taught in church. <laughs> but I don't want to be caught outside the spirit because ain't no telling how I'm going to act. I'm not saying I'm always there, but I want to be there more than I'm not. Amen? Amen? So many people have left the Lord in the name of the Lord just because they get tired or simply uh, uh, not inspired to work for the Lord anymore. Wow. Because it's like, Lord, I've been working hard for you and I ain't hardly getting paid. I'm tired. Dealing with your people and Oh, Lord. <laughs> Be like Moses. Lord, get your people. I can't leave. Th these your people. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> so they stop focusing on the work and, for, and, 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 and what they need to be doing is focusing on the relationship, Martha. Focus on the relationship. So watch this. If I and my wife, Trish, and some of you, Focused on how much work it would take to stay in love and stay engaged with one another and connected with one another. Lord have mercy. We look at each other like, ooh, that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> and maybe some people count up the cost and decide up front end. I ain't getting married. 
But the idea, if you got any, any task before you and they put all the work it's going to take up front, how many of you would turn around and go, ooh, I can't, I can't do that. That's too much, too much work. <laughs> y'all, I wish y'all were here to see this crowd in here. They're having a good time. They're pointing each other out and stuff. <laughs> but if we really looked at this and said, how much, is it gonna, how much work is it going to take? Take your pastor, for instance. If y'all, when y'all said, we want you to be our pastor, Pastor Rollins. <laughs> And y'all put at his feet all the problems he's going to have to deal with with y'all at the front end of his ministry. Yeah. Woo. You got to be called to say, yes, I'll still do it. Amen. Pray for you, Pastor and, and, and Lady Rollins. <laughs> because they see the work yeah. and the beauty of it is, they said, I'm focused on relationship yeah. with God and his people and not the work. You focus on the work, you, 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 you might get discouraged. <laughs> so if, if, if Trish and I did that, we wouldn't be able to stay married for almost 30 years, 28 to be exact, and look this good. Amen? Yeah. Right, That'd be hard to do. So, so, so the thought is, no matter how much work it's going to take, right. we just got to do it. Because right. losing you is not an option. Departing from you is not an option. So we're just going to have to figure it out. I told my wife the day we got married, I said, you ready to eat beans out of a can if we have to? She said, yes. Praise God. Whenever we have beans out of the can, we have some meat with it so far. Amen. God is good. (laughs) The bottom line is you must be interested and engaged in the relationship more than the work. You have to be in the relationship more than the work. Because indeed, there is work to be done. So reference in part in Colossians 3, 23 and 24, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart uh, as working for the Lord, not not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So even in your relationship with one another, with your spouse, with your children, everybody else, you are doing it. For Christ. And when you are not, you're doing it for self-interest, you're going to lose interest in some of those relationships. I ain't happy no more. She don't make me happy. He don't make me happy. That was never their purpose to begin with, is to make you happy. That's another sermon. We're going to move on. So, <laughs> when you think of the state of our relationships and, and when we first came to receive the gift of salvation for forgiveness of our sin, there was a strong sense of awe and appreciation and reverence and and, and, and gratitude. But he's letting the church know, you have left that way behind. Yeah. You're not working in that mode anymore. Right. So, much, so, so, much was, uh, so much was done uh, with, uh, was done with the relationship at the front end. Everything that was done at the front end needs to carry it through the relationship. Right. So, so we have to make sure that we don't leave our first love. So, Sister so, so China, wherever you are, I can't see you. Raise your hand. Sister so, so China in here? Amen. So, know this. This day, Christ is your first love. I don't care how tall, dark, and handsome any little boy come before you. I don't care what kind of car he driving. I don't care what kind of bank wide he take out of his pocket. Know that that's not the first person who gave you attention and loved you. That fella is behind Christ, behind your mama, behind your daddy. So stay with it, the one who is your first love, and that is Christ, ultimately. And fellas, same thing. I don't care how fine she is, how slowly she bat her fake eyelashes. Your first love is Christ himself. My Lord. He said, he ain't preaching. He picking. I'm preaching, y'all. I'm preaching. (laughs) Focus on the relationship. Don't leave your first love. And so here's the thing. When you're working in relationship, you are not doing it to show anybody up. You are not doing it to put yourself out front, even for recognition. And we need to recognize folks when they do something well. 
One thing I found out, you know, at, at work, when there's one, one culture, I think it was in the UK, they are so surprised at how Americans are always patting each other on the back for doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> like, y'all high five and celebrating, that's what they're supposed to do. Why are we celebrating so much? Tell them, keep going, you ain't done. But it's, it's all right to, to celebrate when people do good things. It's all right to recognize folks. But the person who is doing the work should never get caught up in that if they're doing it for Christ. We are doing it for the purpose of elevating Christ. That we may give more people the opportunity to see Christ and feel Christ's love through us. Because it's by grace we have been saved through faith. And it ends up and says that none of us can boast. This was never done to be just about you. What you were given, you were given for a purpose to edify Christ. And final point, if you truly had it, it's still in you. If you truly had it, it's still in you. And he was letting the church know that, that, that they had it in them, but it was fading. And he had to call it out. And it's worthy to note that, that, that whatsoever is praiseworthy in any of these churches is first mentioned by Christ. Right. Let it us know that God is more intent on building us up, not tearing us down. Right. As so should his people be. Right. You know, the judgmental stuff and all that. We, we should not be about tearing people down to point out their faults. We should take the approach of, where can I build this person up? So that, they, one, they would know that I see you. I see you doing some good stuff. Yes, sir. And as Christ said, that's one thing, though. Man, you, you left your first love. Yeah. And seeing it in love, <laughs> that you need to get back. And that's what Christ was doing. So he doesn't look to tear us down. Now, he doesn't want to tear down any church or any person. That would be totally against what Christ stands for. So his goal is to not to tear down his church and his people, but to build them up. Take the good which remain and encourage them to set out to reconnect and renew their relationship with him. Right. That's his goal. Now, to give us a, it is to give us a, re, a, a revived perspective and awareness of the work and, more importantly, the relationship of our first love. The Spirit of God is grieved when we, when we get outside the lines. But even though he's grieved, he's still looking to build us up. Yes, you can be hurt that someone done something in particular, but you don't have to tear them down and hurt them as well. You're, that's right. You're right. The vengeance is the Lord's. Right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So one thing God wants us to know is that even though he's grieved, he's not going to forsake us. He's not going to turn his back on us because we've done something wrong. Right. Nor should we turn our back on anybody because they've done something wrong. Because the reality of it is, we'd all have our backs turned to each other if we did that. Right. We, wouldn't, we wouldn't have to worry about wearing masks because we wouldn't be facing each other. We'd all be looking this way. <laughs> <laughs> so don't turn your back. So to close, you may be someone who, is, who has, 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 uh, hasn't accepted the gifts of salvation and the forgiveness of sin through Christ. If you are here or watching today, Know that God recognizes the good in you yeah. in spite of what you have done, right. what you've been through, right. even what you put other people through. God desires you accept his gift of salvation. Yeah. That is eternal life and forgiveness for our sins yeah. through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That little you have left, if you have it in you but once, it's still there. God's people are wanting to build you up. Yeah. And I want to encourage you. God loves you. Yes, he, he still waits to be gracious to you. Yes, Take courage and be yes, renewed in Christ. And when you accept this gift, don't forget your first love. Right. Don't forget the very one who gave his life, who sacrificed his life for you. So that nothing, no other man, woman can look at you and I and go, I love you more than anything. That's not possible. You didn't know me before I was created. Right. There's no way possible you can love me more than the one who created me. That's right. There's no way possible you can love me more than the one who knew me before I was even conceived. There's no way possible. So when we, when we look at our spouses and, and, and tell them, that your second, this is the only time you can put them second. <laughs> yeah. If Christ is their first love. That's right. That's right. Let us pray. 
Dear Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for your encouragement. We thank you for your spiritual awareness to build us up and encourage us and not to tear us down. But we know that will be against the whole purpose of you dying for us and tearing us down. So, dear Father, we pray as believers in Christ, dear Father, that we are demonstrating a, 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 selfless, a selfless love and desire to, to do the works through the Holy Spirit so that everything we do is heavenly noted. Which means someone has benefited, not just me, but someone else has benefited from the giftedness that you have given me. That someone else may experience the love of Christ. So, dear Father, for those who are listening in and those who are here, if they have left their first love or drifting away from their first love, that is Christ. Dear Father, we want to encourage them through your word that you love them and you desire them to come to you. That you receive the offering of building this relationship. And for those that may not have received Christ, that they will see this as an opportunity to know what it's like to be loved in spite of all that they are. In spite of all the things that have been put on them, all the things that covers them, all the things that holds them back, all the vices that grabs them. In spite of that, my Father, you desire that they be saved and come to know the true freedom that you died for so we can be the person, the believer that you created us to be in spirit and in truth. May God bless you. a word on top of a word right there and I praise God for that but there might be somebody here that doesn't know the Lord I'm going to ask our deacons if they would come those who are here just for a quick sight so you can be seen that as these men come the, if you've never given your heart and life to Christ I would like for you to see one of these deacons so that they can meet with you after service. You don't have to come up now. But if you'd like to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, because this word has encouraged you to receive him as Lord and Savior. Allow God to be your first love, because he first loved you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us died that you might have a freedom to be with him in eternity. Someone out there that is streaming or someone here, those here may get with one of these three men after service today. If you're online, you may shoot us an email, give us a call. We have a number uh, that you can be received and accepted into the kingdom of God. Jesus died for you we all might have a life with him. Isn't it amazing how the God of the universe, the God of this world, sent his son to be basically murdered for you? That he carried the weight of sin on his back so that you might not be condoned to eternal judgment? That's what he did gave his son just for you and me. Maybe God is touching your heart. You need prayer. You can give one of these men to pray with you. If you're streaming, you can go online to do that. But we just want to give you this opportunity right now to do that. So I'm going to ask these uh, deacons, they can go now and, uh, and have a seat. Maybe someone will get with you after service. So we're going to get ready to close now. I just ask everyone to stand as our praise and worship team to come as they lead us out in song. Yeah. Following uh, that, service is done. Yeah. This has been a good day, y'all. Yeah. This has been a blessed day. Yeah. I would have to say the presence of the Lord was here today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
in song, in the, just in, in the word of God, the Lord was here today. And that's how you worship the Lord and feel the presence of him. I want to be reminded, I want to meet with our praise and worship team after service today and the media team and all of those involved just for a few moments. So we're going to go ahead and pray now and allow the praise and worship team to lead us out. You're on this side, go out this door. You're on this side, you go out the other door. Don't forget to drop your offerings into place. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. We thank you for this time of worship. We ask that you bless our offerings and our time.